everybody, I'm Blind Ryan, and this is video 10 of Final Fantasy XIV Describe for the Blind. We are not doing any main quest stuff today. We are doing... Oh lord, are we doing a lot. We are in Thanalan. We are in Ulda. Just gotten licensed to go places and do things. And oh my, oh me, we're going to do things. We're going to start... We're going to start um, by going to Limsa Lamensa, actually. The reason for that is because um, <clears throat> one of the professions is fishing. I'm horrible at fishing, and I'll have to do it eventually. But anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to use fishing as the grinding um, as the grinding class in this instance because you're going to be getting a bunch of different quests, a bunch of different classes, and. Little dinky things give you barely any experience. We can use that to get um, um, to get levels on fishing, so I don't have to grind it as much because I don't like grinding it. And I totally forgot to get um, gold saucer. Whoops! Oh well. Tulimsa. Yeah, we don't need to worry about this cutscene. It's just us flying to Limsa. Alright, here we are. In the Limsa. Uh, we will go to Bulwark Hall and start getting things from there, I think. So we're back at the bottom, near the entrance of the town, of the city. We go to the Aetherite, and there are quests. Oh my, are there quests. Level 60, shall we dance? Oh, that's for dancers, okay. So, we'll walk up to this person. Janashin. Bujar Consortium. She's got red hair. And she's wearing a, uh, a shirt and a hat. And a, and a non-brimmed hat. Uh, Janashin of the Bujar Consortium. Six services of Union Adventure. Oh, yeah, we gotta do all that crap with it when we get our classes. What we will do is we will go this way. The goal is to get all the things. So, all the Aetherites. So first we'll go to the Hawker's Alley, get the Aetherite there. There's the Aethernet Shard. Hawker's Alley is exactly the same as the the, uh, the stalls in the Ganyu. We get the Arcanist Guild. Let me go to the Aetherite again. Thinking we can go to the south here. Yes. Oops. Across this bridge. Past this pillar. I should probably dash. And then we go down these stairs inside the pillar. We get the... Ethernet Shard for the Fisher's Guild. And we will grab the Fisher's Guild. Um, oh, it's a, it's a white-haired uh, kitty girl in a black outfit. Black uniform with a black bandana. Well, a well-wishing welcome to you, adventurer friend. You've worked your way to the fisherman's bottom. When you, want fish for when you want fish for just a day, you can call a culinarian. But we fishermen feast for life. I've set the bait. Think you're ready to bite? Hooray, hooray! Looks like we got a live one. Let me walk you through the life of a fisherman in one 
Since we're surrounded by the seas, the fishing sites are fishermen's delight. If you can't fish it here, you can't fish it anywhere. While some of us rope our fish in with rod and reel, others skin the seabed with nets for creepy crawly critters. You might say we cast a wide net. People prattle all about our pullers just about everywhere in Limsa. And there's much and more I haven't mentioned. We shepherd the ships, preside over the ports, manage the mongers, all while making sure not to leave any adventures out to sea. Always you prefer to work alone, so we'll start you off with a rod and reel. Now, you may not necessarily net the numbers net fishing yields. Full pot fishing positively pulls prettier prizes. And that's the long and short of it. When you're ready for another bite of, of, of bait, I'll reel you in before the guildmaster. Fuck me, that is... I hate to hear you'd have to change your heart. You haven't, had you? Spoken truly like a true bespoke fisherman. Well, then it's time you met the guildmaster. But unfortunately... Unfortunately, unfortunately, and somewhat ironically, our nefarious netmaster is out fishing at the moment. This moment and every moment, that is. So Sisipu tends to tend tasks that require tending to, such as deciding whether you sink or swim with our guild. Or such, yeah, that. Sisipu is presiding over those pools. Whether you decide, decidedly decide to st say hello, she might seem somewhat standoffish, but she's only keeping an eye out for sharks. Be yourself and you have nothing to worry about. Jesus fucking Christ, who talks like that? Sisipu is standing near a fishery, it looks like. And she is a Lalafell older woman with a, with a blue outfit and um, a straw hat. Yeah, she has saved your breath. I heard every word between you and Nimulta. I know she told you my role here, but she said, While well, the Lago is supposed to be the guildmaster, but apparently he has bigger fish to fry, so all his work falls to me. That includes making sure our new fish aren't shellfish idiots or potential anemones. You passed the first test by not laughing at that awful joke. Now you only need the right answer to this question. Are you prepared to fish like you've never fished before? Well, you're smarter than the majority of bottom dwellers that make their way here. Welcome to the guild. Now, this wouldn't be much of a guild if we sent you out to sea with only a pole and a prayer, so I suppose I can spare you a few pearls of wisdom. Nevertheless, you're still going to need that pole and prayer, so I can at least provide you with the former. Here you go. Uh, one out of two isn't bad. I'll even throw in these lugworms, since you're not like to get far without bait. The rods we bestow upon our new fish are priceless objects, which is to say they don't cost anything. Once you know what you're doing, you'll probably want a proper one. But in the meantime, let's see if you can figure out how to hold your pole. Ready right to the line I gave you, and your lessons can begin. And now we go... Where is this? There it is. Plus, Fisher over here so that I can move around. Alright, so now we talk to. Oh, wait, we gotta ready our line. Look at this shit. Bait, cast, hook, quit, cast, light. Lights up the tip of your fishing rod. Nice. Just move some things around a little. Right. Bait with our lugworms. There we go. My first fishing rod. Sissy Poo would attack would it's like to send you your first task. You're looking quite formidable. Let's hope you don't scare all the fish away. Well, the first rule of fishing is to hold on to your rod. Take care of your rod, and your rod will take care of you. Let me know if I'm going too fast for you. Since you're new here, we're going to start small, and they don't come much smaller than anchovies. You'll find schools of anchovies swimming around outside Gallatin Bay, so you can catch your meat to supper without even walking ten yards. Anchovies are hardly the most cunning fish in the sea, making them an ideal first assignment. Simply bait a hook with some of those lugworms I gave you, dip it in the water, and the fish will practically catch themselves. Catch, lament some anchovies for Sisibu. Hit the lure, approach the water, use cast. When you feel a tug, use hook. And we have fishing. And right, now we grab all the quests that we need. So we go back to the eighth right plaza. And then we talk to the Brujar Consortium lady. Uh, Janasha, excuse me, sir, but might you have a moment or two to spare? You seem the type who enjoys being accosted for menial tasks, and I require someone to make a delivery to the beautiful sisters of the Edelweiss. 
I wouldn't be surprised if we hadn't heard of them. The sisters prefer not to advertise their presence here amongst the women. They do, however, provide a rather unique service of which the Bujar Consortium has recently been the beneficiary. Heavy delivery of this package to their doorman, Lone Lord, along with a profuse gratitude. I don't know where these fucking anchovies are supposed to be. Hang on. Logs. Fishing log. supposed to be going for those fish. Five laments and anchovies. Oh, surrounding limps and laments and closing those directly outside of the pit. Okay. So we just pop back to the fisherman's guild and knock that crust out. Bruised my thumb. Or rather chipped it and drug it across a fence. What the fuck do you want batter on? All classes, all jobs, level 14 plus. Oh, alrighty then. So we go outside of his bar, his very open bar in the middle of the thing. And here's the aft castle, which is right next to the Maelstrom Command. Looks like there's a quest over here. I might have to turn on the fucking AC. It's getting warm in here. Oh, Kalkaya. Pink hair, dark skin, red outfit. As advice for any adventurers heading to the missing member. If you're looking for a place to wet your whistle, Scrag, I advise you to turn tail and run. Captain Roswin's in no mood to be entertaining customers this morning. Even when she is, she ain't particularly good. Though so maybe dealing with a customer is sort of shite what makes shake her from her gold groups. If you mean to adventure inside the missing member, you'd best remember to pay your proper respects to the captain when she ain't afraid of going missing. Kneeling for her would be a good start. My first fishing run, and... I thought there was other quests. Oh well, it's not important. We'll get this shit, don't you worry. A bunch of lady pirates. And it's called the missing member. Hmm. Neil. So the captain is a uh, a human woman and she's surprisingly not wearing very much. Just a jacket and long boots and shorty shorts. Oh, so he knows his place. Good. Only the Krakens have the same sense of propriety. Bastards keep seizing every garly and shit before we can take the crack out. It. It's a starry state of affairs when your crew's reduced to preying on the leavings of a mangy bunch of man boys. Me and yourself would be right disappointed to see how far we've fallen. Younger. Disappointed. He falls to his knees and is sad. Your utter disappointments. Hmm, so you, know, so you do know something I'm in pain, but your sympathy ain't worth more than a fight and piss. It's well and good we got the Admiral's permission to capture, gar gar capture Garlean ships, but what's the use if we keep getting beat to your prey? We built our reputation we're even right off the coast of Vilbran, not sailing a dozen malms into the bleeding sea. A few Imperial dogs found in Lamincent territory get snatched by Krakens hunting in open waters. I rallied my crew's spirits when I said we were reviving the old ways, but after all our struggles, they seem designed to let those bastards have all the fun. <laughs> Rally! You try to cheer Roswin up. He does a jig. Alright, you trying to make light of my dilemma? Don't push your luck, Scragger. I'll get you with the hook like a regular pirate. Wait, that's it. We're pirates, goddammit, so we should think like pirates. Bugger keeping them in some water safe. We'll raid supply shipments to the Garlean outposts along the coast of Aldenar. 
Ah, it's so bleeding simple. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. Thank you for your unintended inspiration, Scrag. To think, I almost had you fed to the sharks. Fucking pirates be all. I gather you meet with the captain might well. I can hear her cackling all the way out here. Oh, well, whatever you did, thank you for doing it. Last thing we needed was her going on another rampage, ruining deck swabs and leaving us with less meat. It ain't easy playing by the Admiral's rules, but if anyone can find a way, Captain Oswin can. Then we go to the far back of the aft castle, where there is a big building built into the mountain. Oh, it's the Smithing and Armors guilds. Nanza, the guild mistress of the uh, of the uh, armorer's guild. Nanza has a simple yet profitable task for an interested adventure. She has got goggles on, short black hair, very white skin, and a blue neckerchief and a black outfit. Uh, hmm, are you in need of a trifling task to pass the time? And I have just a job for you. Batteron is offering a reward to any adventurer who slays at least five warcraft. There's no shortage of the pests lurking outside the Tempest Gate, so you should hurry and take advantage of this opportunity. I'm gonna go in here. You might as well get these two out of the way. Unless you're blind and deaf, I assume you've wandered into our forge of your own accord, drawn by the siren song of our Smitty's hammers, no doubt. Uh, she's wearing goggles. Wait. He's wearing goggles, too. Wait. Is it a dude or a chick? I think it's a dude. He's wearing goggles. And he's got longish hair. Um, in these here hollowed halls, Limsa's finest pound metal into all manner of tools and weapons. When I say Limsa's, I mean the whole bloody realms. Make no mistake, you need more than a big arm to join our ranks, but if you got iron in your veins, the builder's blessed and speak up. Okay, you're not short on confidence, but do you truly know what you're getting yourself into here, lad? Ours is a trade, trade born of blood and brine, for as long as pirates have sailed the Rotano, smitties have forged their weapons and fitted out their ships from keel to cannon. Of course, till sea swallows all ain't just an idle saying. Brian will eat through even the stoutest iron given time, and our forebears have long struggled to forge more rust-resistant alloys. Lucky for us, the smitties of Eld were a determined bunch and clever too, so when they learned that the kobolds knew something of vast metallurgy, the smitties set out to make it their own. Thanks to the kobolds' wisdom, which they generously gifted us with only the merest hint of piracy prompting, when Vincent smithing, came on in leaps and bounds. Twasn't long before the Gridanians held on and started eyeing our knowledge like we did the kobolds, though. And so, some hundred and fifty odd years ago, two particularly forward-thinking men named Theor Maldik and Bryce Vermelli had the bright idea of establishing a respectable business. Being fair-minded fellows, they'd sell their wares to anyone who had the coin, pirates and foreigners included. If folks were not inclined to pay, they made sure to remind them that we hadn't completely forsaken our pirate ways. Times have changed, though, and we're a wee bit more willing to share our wisdom these days. The company's been running the blacksmiths and the armors guild for years now. Welcome to any soul with the necessary talent and will to work. As to whether you got enough to either, well, that's for the forge master to decide. Speak to me when you're ready to present yourself to him. So what would be? Reckon you got what it takes to train with the best of the god's damn blacksmith in the realm? A round wolf wishes you to reaffirm your desire to join the blacksmiths. Ah, that's the spirit. If you take it any longer to decide, I've been told you'll bugger off no matter what you say. Kind of half-assed adventure is wasting Forge Master Brethel's precious, precious time, see? He's got a lot of irons in the fire. That's why me and the other lads make a point of keeping idlers, imbeciles, and otherwise unqualified getting in his way. Any road, it's time you made went and paid your respects to the man. He's the one over yonder making a face like he's carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. And Guanaco is a very dark-skinned, um, um, a very dark-skinned uh, kitty. And I can't see what color her hair is because she's wearing a cap. And then she's, you know, got on a shirt. Uh, sound a hammer bringing you in from the streets, did it, lad? As well, you find this din inviting for the armor's guild is not the place for quiet reverie. And the clanging of metal, a uh, strike in metal is music to your ears, but mayhap you got the spirit of a shipwreck. Do you have a mind to join our guild? Take it from me, lad. There's no greater joy than working a shapeless lump of iron in a shining breastplate with your own hands. What say you then? Well said, lad. Now we should cover a bit of guild history before forging ahead with formalities. The armor's craft is an offshoot of blacksmith, but the time was when armors and smitties were one and the same. But as the years trickled by, the techniques for working sheet metal into armor plates became a specialized trade. The smitties who showed uncommon skill and passion for this trade earned themselves the title of armor. 
And as you can probably imagine, the skills necessary for making armor are also for shipbuilding. Building ships is a bit harder than knocking out simple helms, which led those armorers who were good enough to work on boats to claim the title of shipwright. Of course, it was one thing, calling armorers blacksmiths and shipwrights armorers, but it was quite another thing calling shipwrights blacksmiths because building a ship and making a hatchet couldn't be more different. It seemed as though a line needed drawn, and seeing as how Limsa Lamensa was built on the strength of her navy, you can imagine why the armorers chose to cut their ties with the smitties and establish a guild of their own. As for the smitties, well, the whole notion of an independent armorer's guild never did sit well with them. There's been a fair old rivalry between our two factions ever since, always trying to outdo each other. Which is why we're ever on the lookout for new talent to help us keep the smitty bastards in their place. All you need to do is impress the Forge Master and we can start you on your train. Be warned, Forge Master of Nonsense's tongue could strip the scales off a fish back at 40 paces. Saying that, you won't find a fair mistress this side of the Strait of Marathor. Let me know when you've mustered the courage to speak with her, and I'll see to the rest. Mind made up, you ready to throw your lot in with us armors? It's time you made yourself known to the Forge Master. That's no empty title, by the way. Anonza's a renowned shipwright and one of the finest crafters in Linsulamins. Head outside and you'll find her blistering the skins of our newest initiative. So now we will go up here and talk to the blacksmith Forge Master. He's a young dude, surprisingly young dude, or at least he looks it. And he's not wearing a shirt, he's just wearing the apron. And gauntlets. Big gauntlets. And booties. About time Randall sent me a new recruit. Ah, it's been too long. <clears throat> I'm Brithel, Forge Master of the Blacksmith's Guild. If you're aiming to become a smitty worth the name, it would be my great pleasure to educate you on the finer points of the craft. Oh, the rest of these sour-faced bastards will tell you it's hard, gruel, and work fit for only the best and brightest, but I say put a hammer in the hands of the willing and see what happens. What do you say then, lad? Will you swing a hammer for old Brithel? Swing a hammer for old Brithel. <laughs> yes. God damn it. <laughs> Aha, I knew I liked you the moment I set eyes on you. What'd you say your name was again? Ryan Practice. A name fit for a hero I've ever heard of. In fact, I reckon I did hear it in a bard song. So was that a poor sod cursing those cups at the lunch? Ah, it doesn't matter if it was saving the world or bedding someone's mother. It's time to forge yourself a new reputation. Found out a new legend. And trust old Brittle to help you do it. There I go, putting the cart before the chocobo. Here, lad, take this cross peen hammer. A smitty without a hammer is like me without a drink. Bloody useless. Well, don't just stand there gawping at her. Take her in your hands. Have a few practice swings. Whatever you fancy. She's all yours now. Oh, what I wouldn't give to be you right now, lad. A smitty never forgets his first hammer. Yee. Uh, do this. Crossbeam hammer. Add. Blacksmith over here. And then we'll talk to him again. Uh, we should see how well you can handle your new hammer. Now that was a beautiful sight. Never forget, a smitty's hammer is his one true love. Friends will betray you, lovers will leave you, but your hammer will never do you wrong. God, seeing you stand there reminds me of a less ale-sodden version of a younger self. Put on to your task. We ain't a congregation of soft-handed scholarlies here. Smitty's learned by doing. Put your hand and make it a bronze ingot. Any smitty worthy of salt's got to master the fundamentals, and you can't get more fundamental than that. It ain't complicated. Bronze is just copper and tin melted down and mixed together. So you only need... Ah, that's it. Copper and tin ore. And seeing as most folk don't carry like stuff like that around with them without a reason, uh, Smid Smidhamer outside can provide you with some for a price. What the lad can't sell you, though, is the fire shard you'll need. Yeah, it ain't complicated, but that don't mean it's easy. You gotta melt the metals, after all, and to do that, you need to get them hotter than a flame-kissed horse crotch. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I've gotta, I've gotta take a screenshot real quick. Hang on, I, I'm gonna post this on the Reddits. All right, I'm I'm done laughing at the fucking thing. Um, <clears throat> the reason I find it funny is because there was a bit of a piss off about uh, me swearing in these descriptives, and um, you know what if kids are watching and shit. Well, kids aren't watching, and even if they were, they shouldn't be watching this because hotter than a flame kissed horse crotch isn't exactly for kids, and that's not for me, that's from the game. So, yeah. Anyway. And that's all there is to it. Think you can handle it, lad? Synthesize, blah blah blah. There's blacksmithing, there's fishing. So we'll do all these crafty quests eventually. It's Nunza. 
she's the black haired chick with the uh, very pale face and the blue neckerchief. Another aspiring armor, are you welcome? I am a Hanzen, the Forge Master of this guild. I take it Guanaco has explained to you the history and nature of our craft. Good, I have little to add on that front save this. The life of an armor is not an easy one. Day after day you will pick flesh and blood against iron and flame, and without a passion for the forge you will fail. The passion alone will not make an armor of you. Truly master this craft, you must be possessed of a will as unyielding as the metals you work, knowing what lies before you. Have you the fortitude to persevere? Ah, I see you have no fear of hard work. That is well. Consider your request to join the Guild of Food. But if you ever give me aught less than your best, you will be out the door before you realize my boot is connected with your backside. Are we clear on that? Good. Now that we understand each other, let us begin with the basics. What is your name? Ryan? Very well, Ryan. This tool is called a, do a doming hammer. Here, grip it firmly. Note its weight. Let me know when you feel comfortable with it in your hands. I'll tell you if you're holding it properly. <laughs> Yay, level 2 fisherman. Where's this doming hammer? Here, add that over here. There. I talked to her again. Ah, yes, if I didn't know better, I think you were an armor grind. Of course, I do know better. Until you craft something with that hammer of yours, you look like a babe with a rattle. The man I've no intention of mothering you. Make no mistake, I mean to shape you into an artisan. However hard I have to kind of. Save your sweat for the forge, lad. I don't expect you to fashion full suits of plate on your first day. Just pay close attention to my instruction, be diligent in your work, and the skill will come in due time. Now let's be about your first lesson, shall we? I want you to take up your hammer and make me a bronze ingot. A mundane task I grant you, one which every armorer must master. Bronze, you see, is the most basic material of the craft, and bronze ingots are its building blocks. It is not the strongest of alloys, of course, but it is that very quality that makes bronze so easy to shake in the middle of choice for a this armor. To forge your ingot, you'll need to procure two chunks of copper ore, a chunk of tin ore, and an ice shard. Ore can be purchased from somewhere uh, here at the guild. The ice shard you'll have to find on your own. Well, are you waiting for me to swing your arm for you? It may happen you'd like me to swing my boot. Next! Alright, so we got those quests out of the way. Now we gotta go north and get the culinary and stuff. And then we gotta go um, north further and get the marauders stuff. And then we gotta go to the Fisher Guild and do all that crafty shit. I wanna get level 1 quests out of the way. And then I'll save up until we're level 20 for everything and then do the 5, 10, 15, and 20 quests. So we go north. Ooh, shit. Okay, this crap. through the inn. Got a few of these. Well, let's go to the... Wow. Uh, let's go in here. In a mountain, or we're in a hillock anyway. Morden. Morden would like to make you a completely legal proposition. He has uh, no eyebrows and he's got his head shaved weird. And he's got a buccaneer's blue shirt. Going for coin venture? How'd you venture working for the Kraken's Arm, one of the greatest pirating crews in Lunsa? If you're interested, take yourself up easier steps to the balcony above and talk to Carvalion, a captain. Do right by him and he'll do right by you. Pirate accent is very hard for me to do, so... Greetings, friend, and welcome to the Seventh Sage. Prevera is the finest spices from the East. All of our products are guaranteed obtained through completely legal means. Oh, you do not seek spices but employment? Well, then let us speak of how you might be of service to our organization. He is an extremely dark-skinned elf. And he's wearing a dapper blue captain's outfit with a blue captain's hat. Our misery returned from her latest voyage bearing exotic spices never before seen in Eorzea. I prepared two samples, each of which I would have you deliver to certain individuals. The first is for Ganade, whom you will find at the Coral Tower. The second is for Master Lingsaf, the head chef of the Bismarck. I do make certain the right person gets the right set. I 
go and return once you have accomplished this task. I want to fish. Perfect. Even though we're way up there. How do I know when to hook? Oh, there we go. Big ol' audio and visual indicator. Using actions from other classes. Okay. Oh, it puts it at the end of your fishing line. Or fishing rod, rather than the line itself. So we've got... Let's see, there's one. There's two. I might as well do it. I'm right here. And now you can see why I will be grinding these off the screen. What the fuck? Gobi. Marathor Gobi. That isn't what I need. I need the damn... I need the damn uh, anchovies. I don't need gobies. Ugh, fuck. There's one. We just need one more. Fishing log, oh god in heaven. It doesn't say any of this shit. Anyway, we're level five here. So now we gotta go this way to the Bismarck, which we will need to do for the Culinarian Guild anyway, and to get the waypoint. There's nude whores here! Phone number and check Discord. Wow. Um... Alahano. He's a server wench. Alahano needs help replenishing the Bismarck's larders. Beg your pardon, good sir, but are, well, you're an adventurer, are you not? I realize this is sudden, but we urgently need help for stocking our larder. We'd be in the midst of preparing a full course meal for soon arriving guests, but I fear we run short on fresh lamb for the main course. I'd be grateful if you could procure four, four slices for us. I dare say it would be quickest to obtain these directly from the source, wild lambs. In case you are unfamiliar with the creatures, I suggest you speak with all Abelfar, a, sta a sentry stationed in Bolar called just below the drowning Lodge. Okay. Beg your pardon, good sir, but this is the Culinarian's Guild. If you are here to dine at the Bismarck, one of our waiters will be along shortly to show you to your... Oh, you're not a patron. Might I assume then that you wish to become a Culinarian? If so, I wholeheartedly recommend you join the Culinarian's Guild, where, may... where one may learn the culinary arts under the finest chefs in all the world. Let's say you. Seems a random looking... a random human. Wait, is that a dude? Why is it so hard to tell if it's a dude or a chick? Wonderful, and without further ado, I shall acquaint you with the history of our guild. As you are doubtless aware, Lumsa Lamensa has long been the gastronomic, the gastronomic capital of Aeors. The city's rich culinary tradition is the product of a unique combination of factors. The first is our proximity to the fertile lands and plentiful seas of Bilbrun, which have ever yielded bounteous, bounteous produce. 
The second is our standing as the Rome's foremost trading port, which grants us access not only to exotic ingredients from faraway shores, but also to foreign merchants versed in their use. We are, in short, the beneficiaries of culinary knowledge from every corner of the world. Until recently, knowledge of this kind was passed on solely through word of mouth. I was therefore <clears throat> susceptible to corruption and loss, but that all changed when one man made it his mission to catalog every recipe of note. His name was Admiral Gulskif Baldwainson, also known as Mastfleet. The man's love of fine cuisine was such that at sea he would regularly spend as much time preparing meals in the galley as giving commands on the bridge. It was none other than he who founded the Culinarians Guild and codified the cooking methodology. Today, the guild carries on his legacy, through this, though the scope of our endeavors has expanded significantly. Not content with simply preserving existing recipes, we labor tirelessly to devise wholly new, novel culinary creations to which, with which to delight the senses. To this end, our doors are open to folk from all walks of life, including adventures such as a good self. One may liken our guild to a great pot of stew, and each member an ingredient imparting a unique flavor. As with every dish, however, adding ingredients willy-nilly is certain to spoil the taste. Before you may take your place in the pot, you must be deemed a worthwhile addition by Guildmaster Lingsa, a man whose passion for cookery burns hotter than any other. Before troubling you, I must warn you that ours is a truly sweltering kitchen. As such, you would be well advised to ask yourself, can I stand the heat? If you truly believe you can, speak to me once more, and I shall be glad to guide you through the enrollment process. Be right back. Alright, I'm back again. We put on the lasagna. Should be ready in about 85 minutes. So I have the resolve to walk the path of the culinary, and that's timing. Wonderful. Then you must speak to Guildmaster Lingsath at once. This will come as no surprise, but he's the finest chef in Linsil Immensa. Skill and dedication are second to none. <clears throat> you will find the Guildmaster upstairs yonder, keeping a watchful eye on his charges. Impress upon him your desire to learn, and he will surely find a place for you in a stew, by, by which I mean the guild. Tisha. She's just some random serving man. Oh, I guess it is a dude. Need hmm. someone to report a bilking patron. We spare no effort to ensure that all our patrons enjoy the finest food and hospitality, and it's so doubly and so it is doubly hurtful when someone decides to leave without settling the bill. Naria Bell ago, a first time patron, did just that. For Sushmo is the one who lovingly prepared the man's meal. She's quite upset by the whole affair and has taken it upon herself to draw an illustration of the offender. Might I trouble you to deliver it to the yellow jackets on our behalf? Sushmo should be the one to be done adding the finishing touches by now. So we go up the stairs and Lingsath is a giant of a man wearing um white muffs, white mittens, oven mitts. And um he's got on a, a chef's toque. And he's got a beard but no mustache. Gray beard but no mustache. Well, my adventure, I take it you want to join our guild. Let's have a good look at you then. <clears throat> bah, what an underfed whelp you... What's an underfed whelp like you know about cooking? Judging by them scrawny arms of yours, you'd struggle to lift a spoon, never mind a skillet. Ah, I just, I just. It doesn't take much muscle... It doesn't take muscle to be a culinary, and hell, it doesn't even take talent, at least not on its own. No, son, more than anything else, becoming a good cook boils down to passion. If you got that, there ain't nothing you can't achieve. So tell me, have you got it? You got the passion to become a culinary. That's the spirit eye. Your passion for the culinary arts is plain to see. And you'll be needing every bit of it if you want to become a master culinarian. Well, I've mastered our 12 course dinner. I'd hardly finish the soup. Make no mistake, our trade's as tough as, in, as old mutton, and passion's the only thing that gets us through the grisly bits. But enough talk. What do you call yourself? Well then, Grind, welcome to the guild. To mark the occasion, I present you with a very own skillet. Ain't much to look at, but it'll more and serve a novice like yourself. <clears throat> now let's see if you can tell which end's which. Aye, aye, I know. I said you'd struggle with the spoon, but you won me over. Now show me you can hold the skillet, and I'll get you right started on your first task. Oh, no. oh right, the other one. A new sample from the Seventh Sage. All right, let's have a look at it then. Hmm, I didn't smell nothing like that before. The notice came with it. Says it's a root what grows in Othar. Last I heard, Othar was under Imperial rule. How the Seven Hells did Carvalion manage to get a hold of this? Any road, I reckon I can cook something fresh and new with it. Thanks for the delivery, friend. So now we must. We must always to Good. And that Polarian goes there. Hmm. I'm 
thinking I'm going to move these up top. you're holding the skill the right way around. Good. Culinary lives and dies by his utensils. Get that in your head before you do all else so your food will look like shite and taste worse. Now let's see what you can do. Stars, I want you to make me maple syrup using your skillet. Recipes as simple as they come. You only need two things. Maple sap and a fire shard. Gossy sells sap over the guild camp. No time's a waste, so get to work. It doesn't pay to keep folk waiting in our trade. Alright, She is tan and has grayish hair. Girl, I put my heart and soul into that grilled dodo. If I ever get my hands on the scoundrel, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Here it is, my rendition of the criminal. Please deliver it to Godbird at the Coral Tower. He'll know what to do. He ain't gonna have a fucking clue what to do, because you can't drop her shit, lady. Chum? Miss the eighth in that shard. <clears throat> We've got Ethernet access to the Zephyr and Tempest gates. Uh, Ganad. <laughs> That's a yellow jacket. Welcome to the headquarters of the yellow jackets. The keepers of the peace here in Lumps of the Is there all I can assist you with? As a woman. A sample of spice, courtesy of the Seventh Sage, you say. Hmm, there's no mistake. This is fire sand. Kind used by the Garleans besides. Quite intriguing. Very well. We will consider placing an order. Oh, you thought you had brought me spice. I see you're not familiar with Carvalinisms. For the sake of convenience, you use the word spice to refer to literally anything that is procured on the high seas. Lest you worry, the man isn't engaged in any activity that is considered piracy. Far from it. Think of him as a traitor, a heavily armed one who re represents laments and interests in the eastern lands. So he's a pirate. Godbert. A builder at the Bismarck, and you have an artist's rendition of man. Wait, what's it say? A drawing of a man? Question mark. Pieced together from descriptions given by eyewitnesses to his crimes most heinous. Or uh, what in the seven hells is this supposed to be? It looks more like a prow of a ship than a man's face. Look, we'd like nothing more than to bring the offender to justice. It's our duty, after all. However, we'll need a little bit to more to go on than this piece of art. It would be easiest for all involved in Rasushma were to come here and answer some questions. Please relate to her as much. <clears throat> and now my favorite class in the game so far. Uh, Blothoda. Oh, there, adventure. It's a woman. Rogadin? Yeah. Uh, curious about the Marauder's Guild, are you? Any axe worth wielding needs two hands on the half and has a blade which can chop clean through a galley's mess. That's the kind of weapon our members train to use with deceptive swiftness, swiftness and brutal force. <clears throat> She's wearing chainmail. Full chainmail. The coif and all. If you are of a mind to make the Marauder's Art your life's work, then our guild welcomes you with open arms. What say you, lad? Can you join the ranks? Hell yeah. Well, then, here's a bit of guild history, so you know what you're getting into. It all started with ships, you see. What have ships got to do with axes, you ask? Well, building them would be pretty bloody difficult without a sturdy tool to lock down trees or timber. And since only the navigator herself knows when a ship will run afoul of a storm or worse, it makes sense for Bruce Carpenter to carry an axe on board. But any tool on a ship can become a weapon. And the axe is perfect for hooking yourself over the rail of an enemy vessel, letting loose a world of steel, and generally laying waste all around you. As more seafarers took up the axe as their weapon of choice, so, too, so did the bloody art of the marauder begin to take shape. Especially among pirates, where strength and skill decided to place them there. When I to assembling crews of battle-ready raiders, the pirates started teaching the proper way of wield the chop and blade to the new recruits, and that's how the marauder's guild first came to be. <clears throat> After the Galadian Accord was signed, though, the marauder's guild was never the same. It was taken over, restructured, and purged of its pirate elements. It had been reborn as an institution dedicated to not the teaching of axe fighting. 
The members of this new Marauders Guild weren't no greed-driven cutthroats needed. They were warriors, but sought to use their martial prowess for the good of society. Still keen, are you? Think it over and let me know if you decide to join our ranks. You've decided then. You're ready to join the Marauders Guild. All right then. All that needs doing now is speak with the Axe Master himself. Sounds simple. I've seen folks slink out the door rather than put themselves in the path of that unnerving glare. That's the bloke right there in the middle of the room. One Zoan is his name. Put some steel in your spine and look him straight in the eye when you talk to him, lad. Good fortune to you. I demand blood. One Zoan has big blue and white armor and a big ass axe and dark skin, a Hulk Hogan esque horseshoe mustache, and white hair. And scars everywhere, and marks and markings under his eyes. Yes, I am Wernzoan, Axe Master, they call me. Not the most imaginative titles, I agree, but one should not underestimate the value of directness. I welcome your interest in our guild. The art of the Marauder is used to rend, to cleave, and to destroy. And it is not our way to simply outfight our adversaries. We seek to overwhelm them. Marauder must be the most powerful and enduring presence on the battlefield. We must account for the most enemies defeated. Our role in combat is that of a steel whirlwind, dealing death and destruction without equal. No doubt the question has already been put to you by Bluthoda, but once more I shall challenge your commitment. Are you prepared for the bloody carnage that awaits an initiate of the Marauder's Guild? Are you prepared for carnage? Yes. Very well. Your name? Attend me th attend me well, then, Brian. Hold fast to this moment of dedication. The path of the Marauder is a jagged and perilous one. The blood that spills at your feet will oftentimes be your own. I present to you this axe that is a symbol of your commitment. Your first lesson shall be in how to hold it. Now grip the half with both hands and set yourself in a solid stance. <clears throat> Damn these lines. Yay. Stars, me ox. Actually, going to move Gradania down on the third row because the way I'm going to have to do it. Okay, so from left to right, we've got spellcaster, um, spellcaster, DPS, DPS, tank, crafting, 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 gathering. <laughs> anyway. Ah, you cut a striking figure, Garion, but heroic posing is unlikely to cut a swath of your enemies. You stand now as a student of the axe. Let us waste no time in testing the edge of your chosen weapon. You shall wade straightway into combat as befits a novice of our disciple, of our discipline. Go forth and slay the bleeding, scurrying, crawling pests that plague the outskirts of Limsa Lamensa. Lost lambs, wharf rats, and little, lady, little ladybugs shall be your piteous adversaries this day. Return to me once three of each have fallen to your blade. We'll do that later. And we gotta turn in the Millions Guild. Ah, so you've spoken with Godbert. Fah ha ha. Within the bell, the yellow jackets have that swindling scoundrel locked in a dungeon cell, and then I'll take my filleting knife and. Huh? Godbert wants me to go to the Coral Tower for questioning? Well, what more information does he want that my drawing doesn't already provide? Isn't the picture supposed to paint a thousand words? Gee, man. Alright, are there any more quests on the upper deck? There is one more quest on the upper deck, son of a bitch. <clears throat> it was just there! Nob seeks help with a growing problem. An alarming number of citizens have gone missing of late, though I suspect you already heard the rumors. It is essential that we ascertain their safety. To this end, I prepared a list based on reports from our citizens. Would you be so kind as to deliver it to my colleague in Bulwark Hall? M M M Midalika is her name. My thanks in advance, friend. <laughs> Are there 
any more quests. Oh yeah, we gotta turn that one in. And then... No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. <clears throat> we turn in Carvel and this stuff. Welcome back. It would seem both samples were rather well received, and this is in no small part due to our affable courier. This unfortunate but notoriety accumulated over the course of years does not fade overnight. There are many still resident to do business with a savage pirate. Yet the old days of piracy have passed, giving way to a new wave of opportunity. My crew and I have decided to embrace this way. The Admiral's blessing we engage in a form of trade with Garlean ships. Everything we do, you may rest assured, is within the law. Closet. Got a quest over here, a quest over here, a quest over. Oh, fuck me, we got a ton of these damn things. <laughs> we want to go this way. To Bulwark Hall. We'll talk to Nidalico. And Natanmo. Welcome to Limsa Limsa. There's aught you'd like to know. Feel free to. Mm, you got something for me? You say a missing person's list. I'm not sure I follow. So those two have pink hair and tail, and they're they're dressed kind of provocatively, but not really. Ah, uh, she's whispering this. Thanks for bringing the list. I'll be sure to memorize these names. If any of the missing persons reappear, you can on me to spot them. Most folk enter the city via the Zephyr Drift, which means they must pass through Bulwark Hall. That's why I'm on constant watch here and undercover so as to keep an eye out for suspicious activity. I've been doing this for so long, I've become a pretty good judge of character. If there are shady characters skulking about, you can rest assured I can pick them out. Haha. Uh -huh. And her sister needs help keeping the city a bright and cheery place. Sounds like you're already in the Yellow Jacket's good graces. You truly are a model adventure. Paragon of your, among your fellows. Uh, do you think you could do me a favor? You see, I'm supposed to go and fill up all the street lamps with oil so they'll stay lit through the night. Thanks to this business of missing people, I, skim I s can't simply up and leave my post. If you could tend to the street lamps in my stead, I'd be eternally grateful. Oh, and when you're finished, please fetch more oil from Sissy Boone's Fisherman's Guild. We're running low here, and she has care of our stores. And Abelfar for the Culinarians Guild. Bismarck wants fresh lamb, does it? God, I could go for a slice myself, fresh off the grill and dripping in its own juices. Slurp. Sorry, friend, I haven't had a single bite since my ship began. Any anyway, road, you can get lamb easily enough by hunting the lambs that graze outside the city. Go through the Zephyr Gate and follow the past e path east and south for a bit. You'll run into the fluffy and tasty critters before long. We are possessed of many, many quests that we need to do. Oh, there's the uh, lamps we're supposed to refill. Okay, we'll start that in a minute. I want to get all these other ones. Sweet Nick's Rosy Cheeks. That's a goblin. Goblins are strange creatures. They have tons of bags on them and wear breathing masks, which is what this noise is. Or is going to be. They wear leather breathing masks, a ton of gear. They were, um, they're basically covered from head to foot except for their green ears. Uh, Sweetnix is beauteous gobby and crafty smart trade maker. Sweetnix makes busy deal with Uplanders. Need deliver letter to Gate of Malvin, but Sweetnix has shiver shakes. Uplander walks to Gate of Malvin for Sweetnix. Uplander delivers letter to Tex Lady Patalja. Yeah, I'll get right on it, champ. <clears throat> Into the store we go. Swoz Blatt. Swoz Blatt, the master merchant of Hawker's Alley, once you look into current market prices. And he has purple hair and a purple beard. You, sir, adventurer, I have worked for you. I would have you pose as a customer and survey the market's current prices. Surely they did not see bulk at so simple a task. All you need to do is strike up a conversation with the shop owners and glance over their wares. There are three merchants that interest me Iron Thunder, Kilkaron, and Sinehill. 
Write down all you see on this price list and hand it to Bainson on West Hawker's Alley. He shall reward you for your service. Iron Thunder is a Rogan, or is a Hellsguard. Well met, lad. Cast your peepers over these beauties. Not a spot of rust to be found. Each piece fresh from the forges of Maldic and Domelli's. <laughs> Christ, my fucking lungs. Uh, Dodozon. There's a hectic flush of panic on Dodozon's face as he looks wildly around Hawker's room. He looks... He looks like a Doomspoke. Wallafell. Same one... He <laughs> looks like the same one we saw in the fucking... In the Bend Branch Meadows, the... Birch trying to buy a Chocobo. Oh my, oh dear, my cask of ale is gone, and it had to be the one ordered by someone who doesn't brook tardiness. I would bring the matter to the maelstrom, or perhaps seek help from the yellow jackets, but my client would be most would likely frown on involving anyone official. An adventurer such as yourself, though, would be capable of doing a little unofficial investigating. You find the stolen ale from me, it was right outside Fisherman's Bottom. Someone surely saw something. What's that? You would have the client's name? Oh, none of that. Discretion creates opportunities. Now go to the Fisherman's Bottom and make your inquiries. Before the, this cold of mine grows worse, cough, the bloody executioner's cough. And he's got a porter with him. He's got a blue outfit and a hat. So we'll deal with that in a minute. Kilkaroon, a rat man. Kilkaroon welcomes welcome customer. Kilkaroon loves his lovely trade. Kilkaroon's goods are goodly made. Senegal. Fine morning to you, sir. What can I interest you in? Why, well, you seem most interested in everything, don't you? Is this another one of those investigations? Well, I have never lied. Here's Bainson. <clears throat> You're the one that made a list for Swazblack. Let's have it, then. Hmm, nothing wrong with the market as far as I can tell. You oft times get pirates selling stolen goods at cutthroat prices, and that drives the numbers down right across Hawker's Alley. Thanks to these reports, though, we can tell at a glance where the shady dealings are taking place. Good work, lad. So then we go to the Arcanist's Guild, which is also where we go to talk to the, uh, um, uh, the, the cat, the Tanja. Where is Sweet Nix with those import records? Without the proper documentation, I'm afraid we shall have to expel him from the city. She looks like an administrative assistant, and she's got black hair. Like the he cut. Why, these are Sweet Nix's records. Glad I am to see they were submitted in time. Honestly, you'd think that goblin would have lost his fear of our offices by now. Every month he is to submit these papers. Every month. <coughs> His tardiness forces me to consider his removal. As long as one follows proper procedure, Limsla Mince is quite mellow, welcoming of foreign traders. Pray convey these words to sweetmeats. Perhaps it'll aid in soothing the poor goblin's fears. Uh, help collecting uh, imported goods. Here at Melvin's Gate, we inspect all the goods that are imported into Limsla Mince and collect duty as the law requires. Some merchants, however, seek to evade this obligation and we must chase them down. I'd be grateful if you would deliver these two ledgers, one to a man named Sundamal, whom you will find at the Octant, and the other to a woman named Letitia, who works at the Bismarck. If you're uncertain as to the whereabouts of the Bismarck, ask Sundamal when you meet him, and he'll point you in the right direction. <coughs> Miri, the old receptionist. Welcome to the Arcanus Guild. It is here that we research and develop the field of Arcanima. Arcanima is the science of employing arcane geometries, Intricate patterns that map the unlocked industry in mysteries of existence. You mean fractals? To draw forth and manipulate the body's etheric energies. If you prefer an arcane art built on structured thought and precise reasoning, then your discerning intellect may find a home here at our guild. May you consider enrolling yourself as an initiate? Aha! Just as I predicted. Before we proceed any further, however, let us first feed your appetite for knowledge with a morsel of guild history. The roots of Arcanima can be traced back to the esoteric calculations practiced by the people of the South Sea Islands. It was these island folk that first discovered a method to express natural phenomena in a mathematical term. Building on this process, the existing mathematical formulae were further developed into arcane geometries, precise patterns that allowed a practitioner to weave aether into specific magical effects. The mages who invoked this new form of magic became known as arcanists, and the school of Arcanima was born. Many such mages, 
Wishing to expand their understanding of the world, took to the seas aboard trading vessels. Upon their arrival in Munsa Lamensa, they found themselves welcomed into the academic elite and soon secured positions in the realm of governance and council. <clears throat> the, the knowledge of an arcanist, however, is traditionally passed on from master to disciple. As such, Admiral Merlvid, counting several wielders of Arcanima among her personal staff, became concerned that this exclusionary practice would lead to the eventual extinction of the Ark. So the Admiral's express orders and official Arcanist Guild was established and funding was provided for research and training. The complex and demanding nature of Arcanima, however, remains the greatest threat to its own future. If you invite such cerebral challenges, then you have but to reaffirm your commitment to joining our guild. Well, have you decided to enroll in our guild, or are you now intimidated by the thought of excessive thinking? Your sound judgment is to be commended. Now, standard practice dictates that I introduce you to our guildmaster that you may convey your intentions in person. Due to extraordinary circumstances, however, he is unreachable at present. Instead, you may speak with Mistress Thubergeen. Thubergeen? Thubergeen? That is a weird name. T-H-U-B-Y-R-G-I-E-I-N. She has shouldered full responsibility for the guild's leadership in the interim. Find her just over there by the bookshelf. She needn't be shy. Though her mind is sharp and critical, her manner is always most welcome. She's a big old Rogadin chick with a big old dress. And a monocle and purple hair. Yes, I am Thurbergeen. Greetings and welcome to the Arcanus Guild. As Murray has doubtlessly explained, I am serving as acting guildmaster until our wayward leader deigns to return. I assume our capable receptionist also spoke of our art's origins. Allow me then to expound upon this nature. Arcanima taps into the living energies of Aether. This, the evidence of this is represented most aptly, perhaps, by our ability to manifest the arcane entity, entity Carbuncle in the manner of magic which this ethereal ally employs at our command. Part of the discipline, however, is found in the pursuit of definitive solutions to any potential quandary, even on the field of battle. Nay, especially on the field of battle, this principle takes precedence. If one wishes to make certain the question of victory, then one must apply the most effective strategy. An arcanist is measured by his ability to calmly analyze the situa situation from moment to moment and respond with the most appropriate spells at hand. The study of Arcanima will test your mental faculties at the point of perplexity. Are you prepared to reason your way through predicament after predicament? Yes, I am prepared to reason. An unambiguous response, the kind I most prefer. Let us now see if the clarity of your words is matched by the sharpness of your mind. Here, take this grimoire in hand, and we shall ju next judge your aptitude for our discipline. Maybe I'll change and be a... And be a, uh, an arcanist, primarily. I don't know, we'll see. Tome, is it not? I promise you, a grimoire's weight becomes a comforting anchor amidst the shifting seas of battle. In fact, you will soon discover. In Lower Lenoski, you will find, among others, three species of pests Wharf Rat, Little Ladybugs, and Arlai. I ask that you employ your fledgling skill in Arcanima to eradicate three of each type of creature. Leave the city through the Tempest Gate, and you will soon encounter the potential targets in abundance. As long as you remain focused, I do not perceive these opponents causing you or your budding abilities undue difficulty. Once you return from completing this preliminary trial, I will welcome you as an official member of the Arcanist Guild. Your judgment remains swift and clear. Yeah, this definitely seems more my style. Alright, we've got a quest over now. So we talk to Mr. Sweet Mix. Uplander delivered leather to the gate of Malvin. Uplander has wide heart and swift legs. Tax Lady Patalja is kind backwards for Sweetnix. Sweetnix has an outflow of joy for Tax Lady Patalja. Sweetnix is happy goblin. Gives Uplander jingly shit. There we go. An eager Lamenson? Oh, dancer. Let's knock out, knock, out, knock out these fucking lamps. 
13 out of 30. <clears throat> That's how many quests we can have. God in heaven, we're going to be doing a lot. I'm going to have to split this up into Lamensa and Olda. Because we're getting to our dinners coming up pretty quickly here. Eh, fuck it. I'll just pause the video. <laughs> more of these street lamps. We actually went this way to get to the Fisherman's Guild before. Now what? Did I miss one? Oh no, I didn't. That one's down at the bottom. Ruin. Deals unaspected damage with a potency of 240. A conjurer only has 190, and he's... I mean, we're level fucking a ton. Final gutter in street lamp. Hot Wawa Lago's out there, just fishing away. Small boned settler. Seller. Did I see someone walk off with a cask of ale? Why, sure, it was during the afternoon offloading. Fella didn't look like a thief, though. Hoisted the cask and walked right over to the Astalicia. angler. It's a kitty. After a cask, well, can't really say if it's your cask, but there was a big fella come by recently carrying one. He asked me if I had smoked Mackey's. Go to go down nice with ale. Taint the only thing I know, neither. Blouse wore black, and you know what that means. The bloody executioners. Preoccupied Porta. Looking for Dodazon's cask of ale, eh? I'll help you. Dodazon ain't a bad sort for a sw swiping traver. Traitor. There was a toper cam asking about the cask. Wanted to know if it was ale, the poxy fool. And then Fisherman's Bottom. I stay the street line. You're doing what, son? What am I going to do with that girl? She has the nerve to ask me for work problem and try to provide her savings, only to foist it on the first adventure that comes along. Being young and pretty does not give you a license to shirk responsibility. I shall get her oil, all right, and a piece of my mind to boot. Anchovies swim off every shore in Winslow and Lindsay, so you can bring them back from anywhere you like, as long as it's not the fish mongers. Here, Chovy Chovy, here, Chovy Chovy, fair flock of feisty fish you got, giddy guppy. Careful, they don't slip out of sight. It's Wawalago, the guildmaster. Wawalago, to what do we owe the uh, pleasure? He is a very sun browned, mustached Lollafell with a fishing hat. The guildmaster's got to get after the guppies, dividing up the daily drudgery, picking out a proper portable, potable, and some support and some such support and service. And who gets after the and who gets after the guildmaster? We have books to balance, you know. Books you should be balancing. I did my best to balance the books, but the bilge keel bent the bow back, bouncing the whole batch off the boat. That's not what you know. It was just an expression. Ugh, but that's neither here nor there. As long as you keep it the bit grind, our books will balance themselves. Don't let that go to your head, of course. Any beginner can snag some anchovies, but you'll need to experiment with different lures and explore new waters if you want to catch the big ones. Fundamentals are fine, but the fun is fishing for new finds. Like my uncle always said, fishing's like philandering. You never know what you'll catch. That's disgusting. And with those well-spoken words of wisdom, we'll leave you to your wiles. Oh, poor sissy Just gotta deal with that dickhead. 
the poor wee bastard. Alright, so we've got our level 5 quest, but I'm not going to grab it yet. We have other quests to do. First things first. We're going to go back up here. That is seriously annoying. That fucking map. Okay, yeah, he's up here. So we go... The map gives you so much crap to look at, you can't keep it all straight. It's so annoying. Sindamal is a yellow jacket. A ledger from Malden's Gate, you say. Yet more outstanding duty things. When will those merchants ever learn? Very well. If I catch sight of any offenders, I shall drag them to the gate, kicking and screaming if needs be. One more ledger bound for the Bismarck, you say? Follow this path to the upper deck and you'll find the place. Oh, cool. Pops, uh, pops us right in the fucking... Right in front of it. And Letitia... Tax evaders among our patrons to say, goodness me. I dare say this may well put an end to their appetite, but this is in the best interest of the city state. If any of the merchants named in this ledger come to dine with us, I shall see that Malden's gate is notified without delay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh right, right. Two more quests. So we go to the Fisherman's Guild again. We've got to go to the Rogue's Guild, and we've got to go to. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's do this one first because it's silly. So we go across this bridge to this big fucking ship. Big, big fucking ship. This is where we learn a stupid dance. I believe this one is the Irish Jig Stupid Dance. So we go into the past Alicia. We go up. Go up again. And we go out on the... On the ship itself. Young Executioner. Yep. They are doing... Uh, they are doing Irish Jigs. What are you what are you looking at? This is a dance duel. A dance duel. Much more important than anything you got. Much, much more. It's an old it's an old bald bearded Rogadin and a young kitty. You may be able to scamper up the rigging of the crow's nest, but can you get down enough for a siren's tea, you great clod hopper? Begging pardon, Captain, but there ain't no Nakoda alive heavier on her feet than a great galoot and Rogadin such as yourself. Ah, well said, Captain. Well retorted, you bloody sunseeker. Or was you a moonkeeper? What other lands they got there? Bah, who even cares? Am I right? These motherfuckers are drunk. And they're all wearing black, and they're all wearing bandanas, and they're all wearing bandit masks. Who are you, anyway? There was a whole passel of you before, and now there's only one. This is a miser's trick, it is. Nope, nothing worse than a miser. Horsing or what made magical or admiral. What was his name? He didn't like, you know, drinking or dancing. Bad for corals? That can't be right. Corals, huh? Of course you're right there, lad. He never should tell me something. Anyway, this magical, I'll call him magical pinch fist, passed decrees like they were farts. He decreed no dancing without within a hand's reach of spirits. But no magical smarter than a sailing, man. We just stopped reaching with our hands altogether, huh? We invented step dance, and that showed magical pinch fist and his corals. Ha, ah, that's right, fella. Guess me all fired up, too. Makes you think, like, oh, I know you want to dance. All this time, I just thought you were being churlish, but... We're trying to explain this shit. He is having none of it. No, 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 I insist. Dance first, talk late. That's just the way it... They're very drunk. 
shrug. So now we do step dance. So there we go. And now we look all pleased with ourselves. Getting step dancing. Why you KGC Fox dance like sailing folk you do? Cause I swear there's three of you. Was it? Never mind. You're probably brother now. Practically brother now. You ask me anything. A cask of dodos and zail carried off from pushing my body and my my very own self. I did. Had to a matter of fact, we already drunk all we had aboard. Of course, Dodazon's getting paid for it someday. Don't make a difference if he frets a night or two, huh? Captain stopped. Ooh, he's wearing big blue armor. Like we're in zone. Why, you reprobate horse? That's the tail of the cask the, uh, that cask you lugged in? Moan skate. Blackguard, you dare call yourself a bloody executioner, all hugger mugger about what belongs to who? Dodazon is the cods not to mule about the colors we wear, and you playing for a fool? I'm sorry, Captain, wasn't thinking it through. Gotta fix that, I do. It's what they call a coral failing. Ugh, adventurer, I beg pardon for my man, I swear. Lemlane mistook him for an oyster and gave him grit for brains when she made it. You're already here. How about you square our account with Dodazon? Take this payment to him. We'd be much obliged. Yee. You danced with us and all, so I'm trusting the guild won't inspire any moral failings in you. That's some long keel on the Ostalicia, if you take my meaning. Now the, the bloody executioners are going inside the Astalicia to tear ass. And that thieving pirate is going to learn what happens when you fuck about. Now we gotta go to Dota's on again. This guy's got a blue pirate shirt on and an eye patch and blonde hair. And he is a rugged in. Hi, this is the dutiful sister of the Edelweiss. Her house is deep reflection and meditation, so unless you're proper business with it, you can kindly bugger off. What's this then? A parcel from the Brujar Consortium, eh? Let's have a peek inside. Ooh, walnut bread and ginger cookies, and a few of them Bismarck finger sandwiches, too. Then the consortium calls another right way to show appreciation. Some of them sisters have unholy appetites, so I'd best save a few bites from yourself before I take this inside. Huh, you just let Janasha know we're always here should her boss have made of us again. And now we talk to him again. There's not behind these covenant doors for a worldly type like you, Gov. We're the beautiful sisters of the Edelweiss, all pure and saintly like you. Bugger off. Hang about, ain't you that cove will go by the name of Garion? Ah, I knew it. We like to snow snooch all the rising talent, and what I hear your head and shoulders above the rest. If you handle yourself half as well as they say, you might be of use to us. I forget all that sisters of the yellow life's bollocks. It's just a bit of fun to fob off the curious coals. We're a guild of rogues, mate, and it's mainly our marks as does the praying. Me and mine work in the shadows of limps at taking a keen edge to the rooks and calculators would have earned themselves a million. We don't tout for members, but every now and again we might offer a promise to young co a place in the ranks. If you've interest in joining us, tip us your, tip us your daddles and we'll put a hilt in each one, just like the gods intended. So what do you say? Fancy learning a new, a new trade? Sure. Good to see you're keen, but I should probably warn you on a few points before you dive in. For most guilds take pride in turning their members into the best bloody candlestick makers they can be, we only care about getting the job done. The job ain't pretty. You become one of us, you'll soon be nick deep in scum and knife fights. So if you're looking to scamper across rooftops, the rooftops and build dandies with a blunt, you'd best take up with a different crew. Think on that and come back if you're still keen. I didn't scare you off then, bit. Um, Bean? B E N E? They told me he was at Medicine Cove, and so it's proved. 
You'll need every ounce of that metal soon enough. Now step inside and have a prattle with Jack. He's our uptight, he's our upright man, master of the guild. In we go. It says five o'clock. We've got a Makote serving girl. Wait, oh no, she's just a regular serving girl throwing knives. That's the player characters. We've got people sharpening knives. And in this room, there's a mat. And some tables, and that's about it. It's a very dark room. Jack, he's got white he's got white and green look to him. It's a weird color pattern. He's a human. I am the one they call Jack, though. I'm surprised you heard of me. Perhaps you're good enough to tell me your name, along with that and the along with that of the kindly cove that told you mind. Ah, the famous Garion. Old Lonnie Left Patch let you in, did he? Hmm, he can't throw a blade for shite, but that one I don't miss not when it comes to sizing up a dimmer cult for the stalling. Just one thing, you ain't a pirate, are you? Oh? Well then, it's time you was stalled with the rug. Put on your best beater cases and I'll swear you in myself when you're ready. I could fill your waddles with the storied history of our guild, but that's just what wids and wind. Most important thing, the only thing we care about is getting the job done. Well, most folk, and I'm assuming you're among them, know that not long after Lums was found in the city was overrun by a motley collection of pirates and thieves. But as wild as that lot were, it soon became clear they'd all end up killing each other if they didn't lay, if they didn't lay down a few rules, an unspoken code of conduct, as it were. One, you don't bite the purses of your fellow Lumenses. Two, you don't rook a crew out of their spells. And three, you don't trade coals like they was chattel. Uh, like they was ch um, chattel. I'll admit the finer points of the code are might murky, but most agree on those three at least. Now you might be thinking, none of that amounts to a sack of dillberries now the outlaws, the admiral's outlawed piracy, but in the back alleys and black markets where Merlin's grip ain't so tight, the code's still alive and well. And just as the law is enforced by the Yellow Jackets, the code is regulated by us rogues. We go where the shadows are darkest and hand out just as the limbs break the code. Some rum soaked cove steals good from the wrong cull, and we steal them back. That's the job. Of course, we don't hop the twig when blade work's called for, neither. You see, there's more to our dagger play than just sticking coals with a pointy, and we weaken a mark with poison, fade away, and strike in the dark moments. Whatever it takes to get the work done. Well, Ryan, what do you say to that? You got the guts to do a rogue's job? All right, then. First off, we gotta get your kit sorted. The rogue needs to be light on his dew beaters to stay on a mark's trail. The job may have you fighting across a deck or weaving through a mob, and the last thing you want is a bleeding great battle axe that hooks itself on every rope and post. That's why we stick to daggers. They let you slip through the streets just as easily as they slip through a rook's ribs. Here, take these stabbers and see how they look on you. Just don't get so excited with your new toys you forget to dress the roll. You'd be surprised how many folks come back to me in their bloody small clothes. Spaces for our gear. Whoops. There we go. Now let's talk to him. Jack wishes to give you a few pointers on dagger play. You can manage to strap those daggers on without cutting yourself. Well, we're off to a good start, I'd say. Next, you want to get a feel for the weight and speed of your new weapons. I reckon these bleating cheats in the field outside of Lynx should serve, serve for your first lesson. Hi, right, test your blades and a few of them lambs and slice up some rats and some pugils for good measure. Mind you, mill and basties one at a time, though, lad. I know you've served far worse in the past, but you're no dimber damber with them stabbers just yet. Alright. So I believe that is it for Lemsa. I think. Let's see. Cheapest request, and... All right, deliver the payment to Dodazon. And then we're done with Lemsa, and then we can do Ulda later, after my dinner. But I will pause the video instead of, uh... Yeah, instead of making a second video, or a third, a third video, fuck.
this dude is on. Wait, why can't I turn it in? Oh, must be level 14. Okay. I'll switch to Conjurer real quick. Oh, wait. No, I'll switch to Lancer because that one's the furthest one behind. There you are, not a moment too soon. Did you find my money? Or did you find my ale? Huh, well, that's the price I was to receive, but where did you get it? Oh, from the bloody, er, I mean, from the clients themselves. I see. Yes, there's always some blustery young fellow like that. Hasn't earned his swallows or stars yet, I wager. How'd you say? Captain Munskett is kind to say so. I'm sure, but I hail from Uldah. We trade with anyone if they got killed. Okay. Pirates, princes, they're all the same to me. If I know these particular pirates, and I do, they'll be wanting another cask soon to drink away this little frack off. Many thanks, adventurer. We learned a dance. Listen, bow. Grant's power surge. Hmm. Okay, so Vorpal Thrust and Disembowel are both those. So now we want to go back to Fisher. And alright. When next I unpause, we will be in Uldah doing all of that shit. I will be back later. <laughs>